Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to Miss Faika and all of my friends. I am Nur Akmal Shafika binti Abdul Majid. So today, I'm going to present about the radiographic image evaluation of oblique cervical spine. So this is the anatomy of the oblique cervical spine. Now, I will start on how to differentiate between AP and PA oblique projection. For AP oblique projection, it will demonstrate the foramina and pedicle situated far from the IR. For PA oblique projection, it will demonstrate the foramina and pedicle situated close to the IR. So this sentence explains about the position of the patient. As you guys can see, both of these pictures are looks alike. So another way on how we want to differentiate between AP and PA oblique projection is by looking at the appearance of the spinous process due to the different limb angulation, which is uh, cephalic and caudate. Okay, move to the projection, the true oblique cervical spine projection. The second through seven intervertebra foramina are open, demonstrate uniformity in size and shape. Next, the posterior arch of the atlas and vertebral foramen are seen. Here we can see here the posterior arch of the atlas. Okay, last, the first through seven cervical vertebra, the first thoracic vertebra and the surrounding soft tissue are included within the exposure field. For positioning, the positioning for this projection is correct. This is because the intervertebral disc space are open. The cervical bodies are seen as individual structure and are uniform in shape. The pedicle are shown in profile and the opposite pedicle are aligned with the anterior vertebral bodies. So this is the pedicle and this is the opposite pedicle and it is aligned with the anterior vertebral bodies. Okay, the inferior outline of the outer cranial cortis and the mandibular rami are seen without superimposition. So this is the inferior outline of the outer cranial cortis and is this is the mandibular rami, and both of them are seen without superimposition. Okay, next, posterior arch of the atlas is seen without foreshortening, demonstrating the vertebra for a man. Okay, if the patient was rotated less than 45 degree, the intervertebra foramina are narrowed or obscured, and the pedicle of interest are foreshortened. So to improve this, we need to increase the patient obligate until the mid coronal plane is placed at a 45 degree angle with the IR. If the patient was rotated more than 45 degree, the pedicles of interest are partially foreshortened and the opposite pedicles are aligned with the midline of the vertebral bodies and the zygopopmisal joint are demonstrated. Without vertebral body superimposition, are demonstrated in profile. So to improve this, we need to decrease the patient obligate until the mid coronal plane is placed at a 45 degree angle with the IR. For tilting, the head and upper cervical vertebra were tilted either toward or away from the IR by evaluating the distance demonstrated between the inferior cranial cortis and the inferior mandibular rami and the openness of the atlas vertebra foramen. So, uh, from this picture, we can see that the atlas and its posterior arch are obscure. The inferior cranial cortis demonstrate more than 0.25 inch between them. The here, the inferior cranial cortis. And the inferior cortis of the mandibular rami demonstrate more than 0.5 inch between them. We can see here, the inferior cortis of the mandibular rami demonstrate more than 0.5 inch. Okay, next, the first thoracic vertebra is not included in its entirety. We can't see here the first thoracic vertebra. So, the patient was tilted away from the IR. So, to improve this, we need to tilt the patient head toward the IR until the interpupillary line is aligned perpendicular to the IR. If the patient was tilted away from the IR, I'm sorry, if the patient was tilted toward the IR, the inferior cranial cortis demonstrate less than 0.25 inch between them. The inferior cortis, uh, the mandibular rami, demonstrate more than 0.5 inch between them. 
so the patient was tilted toward the IR. So to improve this, tilt the patient head away from the IR until the interpapillary line is aligned perpendicular to the IR. So uh, this is for the PA projection. So for epi oblique projection, when the head and upper cervical vertebra are tilted away from the IR, the distance will increase and the foramen is not demonstrated. And when the they are tilted toward the IR, the distance will decrease and the foramen is demonstrated. For beam angulation, to, to obtain open intervertebral disc space and undistorted uniformity shaped vertebral bodies, the central ray must be angled in the same direction as the slope of the vertebral bodies. So, based on this picture, the intervertebral disc space are closed. The cervical bodies are distorted. The posterior tubercles are demonstrated within the intervertebral foramina. We can see here the posterior tubercle demonstrate within the intervertebral foramina. So the central ray was angled 15 to 20 degree cephali. To improve this, angle the central ray 15 to 20 degree caudate for PA oblique projection and 15 to 20 degree cranial for epi projection for alignment the alignment between the x-ray tube and patient cannot be determined because there is no evidence of collimation on the superior and inferior border of the film the alignment between patient and cassette also cannot be determined because there is no evidence of collimation on the superior and inferior border of the film the alignment between patient and cassette is incorrect this is because the distance between the central structure to the edge of the film at the superior and inferior level are not equal. However, at the left and right side also are not equal. So the centering point for this radiograph also cannot be determined because there is no collimation on the superior and inferior border of the film. The standard centering point for this radiograph should be direct CR 15 degrees Cowded to C4 for PA projection and direct CR 15 degree cephalate to C4 for AP projection. For collimation, at the superior border, structures that should be included are inferior cranial cortis, posterior arch of C1, body of C2. For at the inferior border of the film, structures that should be included are body of C7 body of T1 and first rib. At the lateral border, structures that should be include are intervertebral foramen, spinous process, pedicle, and inferior mandibular cortis. For the exposure factor, the contrast used is adequate for penetration because the bony cortical outline of the thin structure, which is spinous process, can be seen and the bony cortical outline of the thick structure, which is body of C7, also can be seen. For density, the density used is adequate for detail and density. This is because the bony trabecular pattern of the thin structure, which is spinous process, can be seen, and the bony trabecular pattern of the thick structure, which is body of C7, also can be seen. So, no change needed for the exposure factor. For markers, there is evidence of anatomical markers shown in the radiograph. It is correctly placed on the left side of the body and placed at the appropriate area and not superimposed with any region of the interest. For aesthetic, the film size for this radiograph cannot be determined because it is obtained from the internet. So the standard film size for this radiograph should be 24 times 30 cm and there is no evidence of artifact shown on the radiograph. For name, the patient's name and ID, date of examination, place of examination are not visualized on the radiograph. So it, it should be placed at the appropriate area and not superimposed with any region of the interest. For conclusion, the radiograph is unacceptable because there is no patient's name and ID shown on the radiograph. So, 
this is my reference that I use to complete this task. And thank you for watching.